So we now need to deal with combination of capacitors. That is a single capacitor. When we draw a capacitor in a circuit, we draw it using the parallel plates uh, to symbolize a capacitor. So this is the symbol for a capacitor. The symbol for a battery is one short and one long. Now those illustrate the negative and the positive terminals of the battery. And then we could also have a switch. This would be the illustration for an open switch. And we could close it, which I'm sure you can imagine what that would look like. Please remember for a uh, for one of our circuits, class, what's the resistance of our wires? Zero. zero. We assume the wires have zero resistance, just like you're flying through the vacuum that you can breathe. All right. So let's take a look at capacitors in parallel. Two capacitors in parallel. We start with our battery. Then we have a capacitor and a second capacitor. This is two capacitors in parallel. We'll identify this as the potential difference across the battery, delta V sub T. Delta V sub T stands for what, Mohit? Uh, change of electric potential total. Does not stand for total, zero. Terminal voltage. Terminal voltage. This is the voltage at the terminals. Eventually, we'll get to the difference between terminal voltage and EMF, electromotive force. We're not there today. So delta V sub T stands for the terminal voltage. Literally, that means the voltage you would measure at the terminals of the battery. So this is the positive plate. This is the negative plate. We'll call this one capacitor 1. We'll call this one capacitor 2. What happens is. Over time, we can think about it in terms of positive charges. If we have a positive charge on this wire, it's going to be repelled from this plate, and therefore we're going to have positive charges build up on the top plate of the capacitor. The same is going to happen on capacitor 2. We're going to have charges build up on that plate. We're going to have negative charges build up on the bottom plates as well. So what we end up with is a positively charged capacitor on the top and a negatively charged capacitor plate on the bottom. All right. If the resistance of a wire is zero and this plate here is at zero volts, this top plate here is at positive 12 volts, what is the potential of the top plate of capacitor one? Winter. 12 volts, right? It has lost no potential because there's no resistance. The, po the top plate, the positive plate of capacitor 2 winter is at 12 volts. 12 volts. The bottom plate of capacitor 1 then, low key, is going to be at 0 and 2. Zero. So notice that the potential difference across the battery is equal to the potential difference across capacitor 1, which is also equal to the potential difference across capacitor 2. For capacitors in parallel, the potentials are all the same. The charge delivered by the battery, Q sub T. Now, if I have an individual charge that's going from, plate, from the battery to capacitor 1, Notice that charge is not going to be split. That charge either needs to go to plate one or to capacitor one or capacitor two, correct? In other words, the total number of charges delivered by the battery is going to be equal to the charge on capacitor one plus the charge on capacitor two because those charges are going to be split between the two capacitors. Using that basic concept, we can start with our equation for capacitance which is equal to the charge over the electric potential difference. We could solve for charge is equal to capacitance multiplied by the electric potential difference. So for each one of these charges, I can substitute in capacitance times the electric potential difference, or capacitance total times the electric potential difference across the battery is equal to the capacitance on capacitor one 
multiplied by the electric potential difference across capacitor one, plus the capacitance of capacitor two times the electric potential, potential difference across capacitor two. What can I do with that? Mr. P. We could, but it's, there's more than that. I agree with that, Potter. You just cancel out all the, the W's. Everybody, everybody brought the W's. Sorry. Everyone brought electric potential difference to the party. I notice they're all the same. They have different subscripts, but we already showed that they are the same. Therefore, yes. one plus capacitance two, so on and so forth. When you have capacitors in series, they simply add. Yes, I'm sorry, in parallel, thank you. I did. I will fix it shortly. <laughs> capacitors in parallel, they add. All right. Please notice that is on your equation sheet, which is helpful in the long run but we also need to understand. So for capacitors in parallel, the electric potential difference is the same and the charges add. Now we're going to look at capacitors in series. We have our battery. We have one capacitor and the second capacitor. So we have the electric potential difference across the battery. And we have capacitor one, capacitor two. This top plate is the positive plate, the bottom plate is the negative plate. So you can see that we have, again, when we set this up, positive charges are going to be repelled from the top the terminal of the, the top terminal of the battery. Therefore, we're going to get a positive charge built up on capacitor one, the top plate of capacitor one. We are also then going to get a negative charge built up on the bottom plate of capacitor two. What then happens with the other two plates? So, they, remain zero. they do not remain at zero. Notice there's actually no connection, no physical connection of this middle piece to the battery, right? So it's important to understand what happens here. And what does it do to it? So what, what then happens, what's the net charge on this top plate here oh, for capacitor two? Positive, capacitor one, bottom plate. Negative. But where did those charges come from? It's here. It, 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 polarizes it polarizes the charges that are already there. So notice in the middle here, the charges don't come from anywhere. It simply ends up polarizing that area. So we end up with positively charged, negatively charged, positively charged, and negatively charged plates. When we look at this, we can we know then that See how long this. We know that the electric potential difference across the battery is not equal to the electric potential difference across capacitor one, which is not equal to the electric potential difference across capacitor two, which is where we started before. They were all equal. Notice that they're not going to be equal now. If this one is at 12 volts, this one's at zero volts, this one then is going to be at 12 volts, this one's going to be at zero volts. So what then is true? about the electric potential difference. Um, Travis? They're then added together. They, if you add them together, we don't know what this one is right here, but we know it's going to be the same as what's there. Therefore, the electric potential difference total is going to be equal to the electric potential difference across one plus the electric potential difference across two. What about the charge delivered by the battery? If we have a charge go, a positive charge go up 
and get stored on capacitor one, we're also gonna have a charge go down and get stored on capacitor two. Therefore, the total charge on capacitor one is equal to what? The total charge delivered by the battery. Uh, Travis again. The charge in one and charge in two. They are all the same. The charge delivered to one is the same as the charge delivered to two. Again, using our definition of capacitance, we get that the electric potential difference is equal to the charge divided by the capacitance. So we can substitute in to this equation charge over capacitance for each one. So this is the charge delivered by the battery divided by the capacitance uh, total, which is equal to the charge on one divided by the capacitance on one, plus the charge on two divided by the capacitance stored, or the capacitance of capacitor two. What then happens, Meg? Um, Sarah Jane Jones. The cues cancel out. Everyone brought Q to the party. Everyone brought Q to the party. Notice, they're all the same again. In other words, one over the capacitance in series is equal to one over the capacitor one plus one over capacitor two. Now. The way that I will usually write this is by inverting the whole thing. So capacitors as a series are equal to 1 over capacitor 1 plus 1 over capacitor 2, this whole thing taken to the negative 1 power. So capacitors in series are equal to 1 over capacitance 1 plus 1 over capacitance 2 plus however many we have to the negative 1 power. Capacitors in series. Again, that is on your equation sheet. So, I find it odd that this book introduces capacitance first and then current second. Uh, luckily, you guys already have some experience with current, uh, so I can describe. Uh, sometimes students have an issue trying to figure out whether something's in parallel or in series. So let me give you my two cents on how to figure out if, if things are in parallel or in series. The little charges. They move along. We have an anthropomorphic charge. Anthropomorphic. Sierra? Well, I mean, human like qualities is something that is alive. You mean human like qualities is something that is not alive, like an electron, for example, or a proton. So we have an electron or proton traveling along the wire. It comes to this point, it needs to decide am I going to go down this wire or am I going to go down that wire? Anytime it has to decide, what happens? It's in parallel. Notice, however, that it needs to also come back. So it, it's going to be in parallel, it's split here, but then it has to also come back to this point. If instead, the charges don't have anywhere else to go, no choices for our anthropomorphic charges, then it's going to be in series. Maybe that'll help, we'll see. 